When was the last time that you saw a pitch out live in a game of baseball? For me, it's been a pretty long time. I can't remember the last time I saw it. And I also haven't seen anyone really talk about why the pitch out has been declining other than the fact that it has. So I decided to make the video myself. I'm gonna be diving into run expectancy and how it relates to the pitch out, but save all that for later, let's just get into the video. So my first thought for the reason the pitch out has declined was that it had something to do with stolen bases and they definitely have had an impact on each other. As you can see, since 2008, both stolen bases and pitch outs were generally on the decline. However, if you graph these two relative to each other, you can actually tell that pitch outs were on a much steeper decline compared to the stolen base. And you can view this relationship more directly if you graph the ratio of stolen bases per pitch out. And if you look at 2008, you can see that there's around 4.6 stolen bases for every one pitch out, pretty low. But over time, you can just see that ratio balloon up to more than 76 stolen bases per one pitch out in 2023. And the idea that pitch outs and stolen bases were fairly independent of each other was basically confirmed in 2023. As compared to 2022, stolen bases increased by over a thousand, while pitch outs only increased by six. So if pitch outs declining isn't directly related to stolen bases declining, what is it about? And the answer is that teams have discovered that it is less valuable than they thought it was. But there comes another question. How do we figure out what makes a play valuable or not valuable? And to do that, we'll be using a stat called run expectancy. So all run expectancy tells you is the average number of runs your team can expect to score from a given situation till the end of an inning. So for example, if you have a runner on first base with no one out, you can expect to score 0.865 runs. Steal second base successfully and your run expectancy jumps to 1.073 runs a 0 0.208 run increase. So that's how much we can say a stolen base is worth. On the other hand, if you get caught stealing second base, your run expectancy falls to 0.254 runs. If you do the same math as earlier, you can figure out that getting caught stealing second in this situation reduces your run expectancy by 0.611 runs. So you can do the same thing we just did for a stolen base, but for a pitch out. And it gets a little more complicated, but the idea is pretty much the same. Instead of just looking at runners on base and outs, you can also look at balls and strikes. And again, the idea is the same. You're going to score more runs in a situation if you have a 3-0 count versus an 0-2 count. And now, instead of just having two options, the runner's safe or he's out, we have a third option, a wild card. Pitch out. Uh, Nothing doing. Did I just see a pitch out? You did. Wow. Nothing doing is essentially just a bad guess. And it turns out teams are bad at guessing, like really bad at guessing, like worse than I thought. In 2023, I went back and watched every single pitch out. Of the 46 pitch outs that happened last season, nothing doing accounted for 72% of them. This means that teams only guessed correctly around 30% of the time that a runner was stealing. So not only do you look really dumb and silly when you pitch out and the runner isn't even going, there's also a real negative consequence in that you give the hitter a free ball. And if you don't think that one ball matters, first of all, you don't know ball. But in all seriousness, look at Chris Taylor in 2023, a league average hitter across the board. If you put him in a 1-0 count, statistically, he's going to hit like Miguel Rojas. But if you put him in a 1-0 count, he's going to hit like Mike Trout. That's how much of a difference one ball can make. So knowing all this, let's do a really quick example for a pitch out. Let's say we're on defense and our opponent has a runner on first base with zero outs and a 0-0 count. Right now, we can expect our opponent to score, on average, 0.91 runs. On the first pitch of the at-bat, we decide to pitch out. There's three things that can happen. Our first possible outcome, and the most common, is nothing doing. The runner stays put and the hitter is going to get a free ball because we pitched out. And because of that, our opponent's run expectancy is going to increase from 0.91 runs to 0.98 runs, an increase of 0.07. Remember, we're on defense, so an increase in run expectancy for our opponents is bad for us. We want to create negative run expectancy plays. Nothing doing happens around 72% of the time, so even though it's a small increase, it's not great because of how often it happens. The second outcome is that when we pitch out, the runner's actually stealing, but we're unable to throw him out. That's going to advance the runner to second, give the hitter a free ball, and increase their run expectancy to 1.20 runs a 0.29 run increase. This happens 19% of the time. Very bad, worst case scenario. And finally, our third outcome is when we pitch out, 
the runner's stealing, and we actually nail him. You know, the whole point of the play. Now, our opponent's run expectancy is going to fall to 0.28 runs, a decrease of 0.63 runs. We finally get a positive play for us. But this only happens 8.5% of the time. So now, if you want to find the value on average of a pitch out in this situation, multiply the run differential by how likely it is for each outcome to happen. If you add the totals up, as you might have already expected, on average, you'll find that a pitch out increases your opponent's run expectancy by .053 runs. Now, I know that seems like a small amount, because it is, but over a 162 game season, those .05 runs will add up. And if you continue to pitch out, your opponent will score more runs against you and you can bet that's gonna cost you wins. So we just calculated the run expectancy for a pitch out for one specific situation. No outs and a 0-0 count. And as you saw, it's not a great idea. But what if the results were different with two outs or in a 1-1 count? To answer this, I calculated the run expectancy of a pitch out in every combination of outs, balls, and strikes. I focused only on situations with a runner on first base, and I ignored three ball counts as obviously no one would ever pitch out and give the hitter a free walk. And here are my results. I've listed the run expectancy of a pitch out in any of the combinations of balls, strikes, and outs. The color-coded row at the bottom is the run expectancy of a pitch out in each of those counts. I color-coded it from a defensive perspective, so if a run expectancy is red, you don't want to pitch out in that count. And as you can tell, it's pretty much all red. This chart confirms the idea that it's better to pitch out in certain counts, specifically pitchers counts like 0-2, 0-1, or even 0-0. You'll find that the run expectancies in these counts aren't as high as those found in hitters counts, and this makes sense. A free ball when the hitter's in an 0-2 hole isn't going to do as much damage as letting him off the hook completely in a 2-2 battle. But as I hope this chart is clearly conveying with all this red, no matter the count, no matter the outs, no matter the number of balls or strikes, in 2023, it is not a good idea to pitch out. You will be creating a negative run expectancy play no matter what. Except in a 1-1 count with one out, strangely. I'm not quite sure why. If you're chasing .001 runs, go for it. Pitch out on your heart's content. So this is just for 2023. I actually did the same calculations, but for a wider range, 2018 to 2020. So just a couple years ago, nothing doing actually happened a little bit more frequently, and teams were actually even more successful at pitching out around 15% of the time compared to just eight. But let's take a look at this run expectancy chart, just like 2023. It's split into outs and counts, and you can actually see a little bit more green here. Now, granted, these are small numbers, like even smaller than the 0.053 that we calculated earlier. Like 0.018 runs is very, very small. And this pretty much, in my opinion, sums up why the pitch out was on the decline, because teams had figured out that even in positive situations, the run expectancy that you're going to gain by pitching out, even in a pitcher's count, is barely above neutral at best. And this doesn't even account for things that can go wrong, like the catcher making a bad throw and letting the runner advance to third base. Like, that's a very possible thing. So this is about the state that pitch outs were in before the 2023 season. And at this point, the pitch out was pretty much already on its last legs, barely surviving. There were only a couple counts that you could really even consider pitching out. And even if you did, the results weren't even that positive. And then in 2023, MLB came around and made stealing even easier. And now when your run expectancy chart looks like this, it's no wonder teams don't pitch out anymore. Unless pitchers and catchers get a whole lot better at guessing when runners are gonna steal, and they can get better at nailing them when they actually are stealing, this chart is gonna stay red for a very long time. Whether or not this is good for the game is a whole nother argument, but in the current time, don't expect teams to do something that they know isn't going to help them win baseball games. In 2023 and beyond, the league is just smarter than that. From a team strategy standpoint right now, the pitch out does not make sense. It hurts yourself. It doesn't make it any less satisfying when it happens. I think it's one of the coolest plays in the game, and it sucks to see it go. But especially with the rule changes in 2023, it's really not going to be coming back anytime soon. I had a lot of fun doing the research and making these videos, and I plan to be doing more in the future. So I guess I'll see you in the next video.